Okay, you're ready for God's word today. Now, I know I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the one that's bringing it today, and I plan to bring it, by the way. I'm pretty excited about the word. But, but you know, this is God's word. Anytime you break a message like, like this out and you start adding scriptures in, it is powerful, and uh, it, it can change your life. And I want you to not underestimate what can happen in your life today and how different you can be when you leave than you were when you came. And I, I'm inviting you, I'm encouraging you, let's lean in and let's have faith and let's believe that what we're about to pray together is a reality in our life. Are you ready? Let's say this together. Say, I'm glad I'm here and I thank you God for your word today. It's changing my life and I boldly declare that I won't be the same again after today. I receive the word and I believe the word in Jesus' name. Shout a big amen. And you may be seated today. We're in a series right now called Family Forward. Say it with me, Family Forward. Now, obviously we have, or maybe not so obviously to you, we, we have really felt like God wanted us to talk about and use this language because our family is in a new season and there, are, there is growth in our family, there is, um, there's excitement in the family. We are, we are east and we are west and we are south and we are north and with God's help, it just continues uh, and we move forward. But we're still family and we proclaim that we are family. And so Ephesians chapter 2, I, I want to I just read this and start here. And here's how it reads. It says, you are members of God's very own family. You are members of God's very own family. If you would, just say, I am. I am. I am. I'm a member, not just of a church, but I'm a member of God's own family. Next line says, citizens of God's country. And then my favorite part of this verse, it says, you belong in God's house with every other Christian. The reason I like that part of the verse so much is because I think one thing the enemy tries to do to all of us is to make us feel like we don't belong and that we don't fit. And, and uh, along the you know, pathway of our life and our journey, this will happen repeatedly to you. And if you haven't had it happen yet, it's probably going to happen in your life in the future. And that is that you're going to feel like, I don't know if I fit. I don't know if I belong. And there'll be a restlessness that you're going to, that you're going to feel. And, and that's why I want to, I want you to see this and, and not just read the scripture, but receive it as a personal proclamation that when times are difficult and whenever there are even within the context of your relationship with your spiritual family or your church family, that you'll continue to remind yourself that I belong in God's family. And if you have been looking on from the outside in, I want you to hear me today, that your life is a lot better in participation than it is in observation. Okay, so, so you might be in the observation deck and you might be just coming to church and observing, but I want to say you belong. You belong in God's house with every other Christian. So last week we talked about the habit of facing forward. And today I want to talk about the power of encouragement. The power of encouragement. And Joshua chapter 1 Moses, the leader, had died, and it caused Joshua, who was, who was basically the protege of Moses, it caused him to struggle and get stuck in complacency and uncertainty, and they were lacking confidence, and, and it was like the paralysis of analysis set in, and God shows up, and here's what he says to Joshua, Joshua 1 verse 2, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. That's pretty blunt. <laughs> like, like he's dead. Now, you and all these people, get ready. Somebody shout, get ready. get ready. God's saying this. He's saying, you guys get ready to cross the Jordan River 
into the future and into the land that I'm about to give you and to all of the family. Say with me, face forward. So the, the, I want to pause there and then we'll read on. The essence of what God was telling Joshua was don't dwell on the past. It's over. Don't compare your past to your present. Forget about it. And rather than getting hung up here, Moses is dead. So think forward. Look forward. Change your language. Instead of talking about the good old days, talk forward. (laughs) Face towards the place that I am taking you. That's what God was basically saying, is that he was was trying to get Joshua out of the complacency so that he could influence other people in the family to move forward. You know, some people think that holding on is being strong. But sometimes it takes much more strength to let go and to move on than it does to hold on. Sometimes holding on is an expression of fear. I don't know if you ever heard the, the, the phrase, when, when the horse is dead, dismount. You know, it's like, it's like, it's not giddy up pony anymore. Like get off that horse. The horse is dead and go ahead and get off. And that's, that, that's something that a lot of times those who get hung up on, if you're not careful and you hold on, you're thinking, I'm just being strong. I'm holding on to the memory. I'm preserving the past. Well, I just want to say to you that sometimes that's weak. In a lot of cases, it takes more strength to actually let go and move on than it does to hold on. So, so, so let's move on uh, the, the verse 3. And this is where the encouragement really begins in, in this next verse. And I just want you to notice this because some people don't know that God is a God of encouragement. And I want you to realize you can even take it and apply some of this personally as if God were talking to you. But let's read it. It says, I will give you every place where you set your foot, just like I promised Moses. He says, your territory, verse 4, will extend. Verse 5, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. I'm never going to leave you, and I'm never going to forsake you. It's God talking to Joshua. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. And be careful to obey. Get, get your Bible out and put your mind in the Word. And don't turn from, to the right, don't turn to the left. So that you can be successful wherever you go. Keep the, keep the Word, keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it. Meditate on my promises. Meditate on the plans I have for you. Meditate on it so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And that's when, if you'll do all of this, if you will, if you will take steps forward, you're going to be prosperous and you're going to be successful. You may not realize this, but oftentimes the promises that God has for your life are, are put on, they're, they're actually just put on hold until we make a move. And we're, we're oftentimes saying, come on, God, you made a promise. And God's saying, I want you to make a move. I need you to step out from where you were, and I need you to walk a little bit by faith, and I need you to face forward. And when you do, you're going to make your future prosperous, and you're going to make it successful. And then he ends it all with, do not be afraid, God tells Joshua. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged, because I'm with you wherever you go. When you look at the timing of this talk, The scoreboard doesn't look good for Joshua and his family. Lots of energy had been expended in the wilderness with no real progress. So you could kind of think of this as as God's halftime talk or his motivational speech, his pep talk that he's giving to Joshua. Hey, let me ask you a question. Have you ever... Have you ever tried to encourage someone who didn't want to receive the encouragement? That's no fun, is it? I think we've all, we've all kind of been in that space. 
And, and I think we've probably been on both ends of that. Uh, sometimes we, we're giving it and somebody needs it, but they're not wanting to receive it. And then there's probably been occasions, I know there has been in my life, when people have wanted to encourage me, and I've just not been up for it. I'm like, yeah, 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 yada, yada, yada. We all get in. That. I think that's where Joshua was. Joshua was like in a, in a place, in a space where he was just, and God had to just confront him and say, time to move family forward. Let me just encourage you, God was saying. Let me remind you who you are. Let me remind you that I am with you, that I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. So if you're taking notes, encouragement helps us overcome our hesitation and fear. Encouragement is so powerful and so valuable. And one of the greatest things it does for us is it helps us to overcome our hesitation and our fear. Cur- uh, encouragement actually means to put courage in somebody. That's really what it means. It just means to, for you to transfer courage from you and from your lips into somebody else's spirit and heart. And all of us are like Joshua in the sense that we have fears and uncertainties and hesitations that hold us back when it's time to move forward. Can I talk to you today? And it's usually just like, if you break it down and you say to somebody, hey, what's wrong? What's up? What's going on? Well, at the, at the core of the hesitation, it just seems like we don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want to be rejected. We don't want to be a failure. We're afraid to lose what we have. The song we were singing earlier in the service is that when I let go, I find life. And oftentimes the scariest thing is just to let go. Because we don't want to lose what we have. Or we don't want to be alone. Or we don't want to be misunderstood. The list goes on and on. But there's these fears and these uncertainties and these things that crowd into our heart. But encouragement is a power that when it's flowing in the atmosphere and it's flowing from one person to the next just on a constant, consistent basis, I'm talking about family going forward. I'm talking about no one left behind. I'm talking about all of us moving together. Encouragement is powerful. Because the greatest things, really, think about the greatest things that we do in life can be scary. (laughs) Our first day of school, or parents, your kid's first day of school. (laughs) My my three-year-old grandson, you know what's funny is I keep using, and they're not, it's not my notes typically, but my grandsons, for example, so get used to it. Uh, You know, if it bothers you, like you got a few years of this probably because they are a feature in my life. And but now I started I started telling them I would give them five dollars every time I used them as an example. So maybe I got to watch out how often I. But in my mind, I I just thought about the uh, uh, Cody, who is three years old. And because his older brother's going to school, he wanted to go to school. He's begging to go to school. They, so they looked at taking him to a preschool and my daughter, Jody took him to the preschool and she had a little family orientation meeting. Like she went from dropping him off over to the other room for family orientation. And they had to come get her out of the meeting because Cody wasn't having anything to do with it. <laughs> like he did not want to stay. And that's how, you know, the greatest things in life, like trying out for the team, you know, graduating from high school and you're going toward college and it it can be scary doing the job interview, coming to church. Like if you, especially if you haven't gone to church in a long time, it probably took somebody 
promising you dinner or something <laughs> to get you to come. And then, and then we get in a service like this, and then we're talking about giving your life to God, making a step toward salvation. And all I'm telling you, I'm just reminding you that, that the greatest things that we do in life can be scary. We got baptisms coming up in a few weeks, and if you haven't been baptized, this is your time to get baptized. But that's the, the power of encouragement that we have for one another in God's family is so that we can keep on moving forward. No one gets stuck. No one, and, and I just want to encourage you, open up your heart to encouragement. Let's let encouragement flow in our family. Here's what it says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11. It says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you're doing. So the writer, the Apostle Paul is saying to the church at Thessalonica, he's saying, hey, I know you're doing this already, but I want to remind you how powerful it is. And I want to remind you not to stop doing this. Keep on encouraging one another and keep on building each other up. You know why? Because encouragement matters. We want to be a house of encouragement. Come on, we want to be a family of encouragement. Uh, uh, an, another thing I would encourage you to write down, encourage you to write down right now, is that encouragement is everyone's responsibility. It's everyone's responsibility. And if you're writing it down, you might want to say, just say, make it simple, just say it's my responsibility. And the reason it's so important to know that is that many people think that it's other people. You know, other people ought to be encouraging me, but they don't think about encouraging other people. And in a church family, sometimes we think, well, it's the pastor's responsibility. It's the platform responsibility. It's the team leader responsibility. But if everyone's waiting to be encouraged, then no one is encouraging. <laughs> and the scripture I just read to you, it says encourage one another. It doesn't say leaders encourage the followers. It doesn't say team leaders. It doesn't say platform. It's just everybody. Come on, everybody. Encourage one another and build each other up. One of the greatest things about encouragement is that it has a boomerang effect. If you haven't ever felt it because you haven't been encouraging much, when you start to really encourage people intentionally, you'll get encouraged. It's funny, like you can't encourage without getting encouraged. Because what you're saying to them, it comes right back at you. <laughs> like, don't give up. Don't give up. It's like, don't, don't be discouraged. Like, phew, right back at you, boomerang effect. And at the end of the day, there's some things that we all know nobody can do for us. You agree with that? Like, nobody can make our choices for us, and nobody can make us successful, and nobody can force us to listen. And that's not what we're talking about. We realize that. No, no, in fact, we don't want to force people to do something they don't want to do. Nobody can force us to learn or to grow. Nobody can make us trust God or serve God. But one thing that we can all do for each other is that we can encourage one another and we can build each other up. And with God's help and all of us doing our part in our church, we can always be a family that encourages one another. A family that considers one another. <laughs> encouragement starts oftentimes, uh, encouragement is not just words, it's other things. I, the environment and the atmosphere, you can't walk in Champion Center if you have even a little bit of an open heart. You can't walk in to the environment without having your spirit lifted because we have been so intentional that this is going to be a house of encouragement. So we, we purposely don't sing discouraging songs. <laughs> 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 and, 
and we intentionally don't have people greeting people who have a sad story to tell. Because we have been intentional with the power of encouragement to consider one another. That's one of our values at Champion Centers. We'll consider everyone. And, and to see the good in others. And, and then, and what I was going to say is that encouragement begins on our face. Now, I talk about this a lot because I need to hear it. And in my history, I'm a melancholy personality by nature. And so when I was really young, I just kind of had a poker face. And I went into ministry, and then I just continued with that because I didn't know. I wasn't aware. And then when we went on television and I started greeting everyone in our programming and looking at the camera, it was like, I was like I was saying, like, so glad that you joined us today. <laughs> and what was funny is that my face was contradicting what I really meant in my heart. My face was betraying me. Like, in my heart, I was seeing people out there that I knew they needed God. And I was thrilled. I was excited for those people to actually have tuned in. But my face wasn't saying that. So a lot of people are afraid to put sometimes things on your face. Come on, can we talk? Because you think, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Here's what I want to say to you. If you will dig a little deeper into your heart, you might be in a season where you are feeling a little bit down and discouraged, but if you'll just dig a little bit deeper, there's a gratitude in you. And there's a hope in you. And there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a spirit of confidence a little bit deep. Just keep on. And as a pastor, I had to say, i got to drill deeper. And I've got to get what is sincere and authentic in my heart on my face. <laughs> it's like sometimes you, you, your face is betraying you and it doesn't know. And you just got to gotta let your face know. You got to send an email to your face or something. <laughs> let your face know. Brighten up. Lighten up. It's time to encourage and be encouraged. There are also people, I'm going to address another kind of person and mindset, that justify withholding encouragement by saying that you shouldn't need me to encourage you to do the right thing. And maybe parents today would think that, you know, about your kids, and that's the mindset you got. Or people would think that about one another. You shouldn't encourage me to do the right thing. Or you shouldn't need me to encourage you to do the right thing. You should do what's right without my encouragement. While it's true that our goal should always be to not be dependent on other people to encourage us, it's also true that we all do better in an environment and atmosphere of encouragement. Can you imagine people going to a game and not cheering for their team? Can you imagine a team not cheering for one another? It just doesn't happen. In fact, if the stadium gets a little bit quiet, the prompter comes on the LED. Make some noise! Make some noise! Why? Because everyone does better. Come on, everyone does better. I said everyone does better with encouragement. How about you try it? How about, how about you just take one week? If you've been a person with that other attitude, and rather than resisting what I'm saying and arguing with me in your mind, just try it, Dad. Just try it. Just try encouraging your son. Rather than withholding it, try telling him you're a champion. You're an overcomer. I'm so proud of you. You know, you go to a kid's game sometimes and and, and, and all of us realize that, that lots of times, like when they're really young, like they can barely, in basketball, they can barely like handle the ball. And, and there's really not a lot of hope that they're gonna make a basket even, or, or, you know, or very many of them anyway. But what do we do? We scream, we yell. 
It's like we're, we're, not, just, we're not just out there on the, the, in the grandstands being so pragmatic about, well, they can't really do it, and they're really young, and they're really little, so I'm just going to sit here and watch. No, what do we do? We scream encouragement. Because we know that that encouragement can cause them to do a little bit better and to go a little bit longer. If there's any bodybuilders that are in the house today, it's likely that if you're a bodybuilder, you'll have a workout partner. And the main job at certain points in the workout is to encourage you. Like you wouldn't want when you go down and you're going to do, you're, you're going to do that squat or you're going to do the bench press. You don't want someone looking at you and go, man, I hope you can make it. <laughs> Dang, that is heavy weight, dude. You don't want that. You want somebody going, yeah, I believe in you. I know you never did this before, but you can do it. And here's my point. Like, if bodybuilders encourage one another, teams encourage one another, how much more should we be encouraging each other onward and forward in our walk with God? And nobody hears too much encouragement. Nobody hears too much encouragement. I'm so thankful for the people in my life who have encouraged me and continue to encourage me. Oftentimes for me, this is how it sounds, people will begin a a word of encouragement for me with, I know you hear this all the time. And I'm like, go, come on. (laughs) Like, 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 maybe you don't realize I don't hear it as much as you think I do. Nobody hears too much. And, and one of the reasons is because every day we're facing new challenges. And we're walking through different places in our life. So the encouragement we heard a week ago, it may have dissipated off of our soul and out of our mind. And I've gone further, just, in just myself as an example, I know for real that I have gone further and done more and lived stronger because of encouragement that I've received along the way. My wife, Sheila, has plenty of things that she could point to and elaborate on that would not be encouraging. (laughs) And I do get some coaching from her, uh, (laughs) thankfully. But I'm also really thankful that she is a consistent encourager in my life. Studies show that on the average in a marriage, it takes five positive comments to equal the effect of one negative comment. So if you flip this into our church family, there are people who have heard many negative comments all week long. And there are people who have heard verbal abuse and had put downs. I'm just trying to remind you that when your mind says, well, I encouraged them last week, that doesn't mean that that's still there and they still have that in the forefront of their mind. Ask God for authentic words. Ask God, you know, to, and I just don't worry a lot about, you know, well, I said that before or whatever. Try not to worry too much about that or you'll just freeze the frame on encouragement and it won't flow. But I do think that all of us ought to be mindful to notice the good in people and to find it and elaborate on it and communicate with it and talk about it and let people know that are around you that you see what they're doing, you see the sacrifice they're making, you see the commitment, you see their joy, you see their, their willingness to come every single week and to serve like they're serving and let them know over and over, let's never stop. What I'm saying is let's never stop being a family of encouragement. Now, there's a lot of people around the room where you're at at different locations today, including all of our our online groups and so forth, who today are discouraged. 
And just like Joshua, when God came and spoke to him words of assurance and affirmation and encouragement, I just feel like this weekend God wants some of you to know that he's with you, he is for you, he hasn't forsaken you, and that he's just waiting for you to make a move forward. There's people this weekend who are going through hard seasons in your life right now. Your world's been rocked, your heart is broken. And you might be going through something really painful, a painful divorce. Maybe you're battling addiction, drugs addiction, food addictions. I wanna, I wanna just say to you today that what the en- enemy has meant for evil, God wants to turn it for good. But it all begins with you taking a step in the right direction. It takes with you opening up your heart to God. It takes you saying, God, I am not going to linger here anymore. He's talking to me right now. And you're talking to me. It takes you acknowledging. It takes you saying, I want to be free. It takes you declaring today as a day of new opportunity and new beginning in your life. And when you do that, that's when all of heaven rushes into your world to help you and to sustain you and to support you in your journey forward. So what I want to do before I finish the message today is that I want to pray over you today. And if what I've just said applies, I'm going to ask you at every location to receive today. In fact, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right now. This is not a salvation call. This is a ministry moment an opportunity, because I feel like this weekend that some of you are in a place and in a space, and God wants to turn what was meant for evil in your life to good. And I want to bless you. I want to speak words of value over you. I want to do for you basically what God did that day for Joshua. And in the name of the Lord, I want to speak words of life. So get your hand up if you say, that's me today. I want to boldly declare health and assurance and confidence and life over you. I want to boldly declare today that today is a day of new beginning for you, for your family, for your future. And I want you to know today, as I, as I speak this over your life, that what God has for you in the future, come on, just receive it into your heart. What God has for you in the future is greater than what you have known in the past. So be strong and of good courage and do not be afraid today and do not be dismayed today because the Lord, he is with you. He is fighting for you and he has a great future for you today. Be lifted, be free, be encouraged in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand, can we? Let's celebrate. Celebrate freedom. Celebrate new beginnings. Come on, celebrate, 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 celebrate. Let me remind you that God is, he says, he, sa- he says this about himself. He says, I am, I am. I want you to know me as I am. In other words, not I was, <laughs> or not I used to be, but I am. And this is a moment. And I, I, I just, I'm feeling this so much in my heart and my spirit for this weekend. This is a moment where the power and the presence of God is coming in a brand new, fresh way, and you're not going to be the same again. You're going to leave differently in Jesus' name. You're going to leave following forward, moving forward, and helping us move family forward. I want to invite you today, if you need a new beginning, you want a new beginning in your life and relationship with God to take a step forward. Maybe today somebody invited you to church and you came reluctantly. Maybe you came with a husband or a wife or potentially you've been here even 
in the past, and that's not new for you. But maybe you strayed from God's will and God's plan and God's purpose, and today you know, and you sense God is calling me. And God is saying to me, come on back. Get on the path. My plan for your life, it's still intact. And if that's you and you say, Pastor Kevin, I want a fresh start, I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer with us today. And we're all going to say it. We're going to say it out loud as a way of encouraging you as you pray this prayer. So let's say it right now. Everybody who would, are you ready? Let's say this right now. Say, Lord Jesus. Welcome to my world. Today I receive you into my life. Forgive me of all my sin and make me a new person. I boldly declare, starting right now, I have a new beginning. I have a fresh start. This is a new chapter in my life. I thank you, God that you are with me, that you are for me. Salvation is mine. And right now, God, I serve you. You are the leader and the Lord of my life. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, I want to be the first to welcome all of you who just prayed that prayer to the family of God. Come on, let's celebrate today. Come on, church family everywhere, celebrate new beginnings.